Over the past couple of weeks, the Delta variant has exploded across the US, with new data flooding social media and major news networks. However, with so much information available, scary numbers can sometimes drown out the cold hard facts, and that can be especially true for things that haven't even happened yet. Hey guys, it's Ian, and welcome back to Is This Legit? Brought to you by MediaWise and PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Lab. Here, we debunk viral misinformation online while teaching you some fact-checking tips along the way. Check out this NBC clip. Some hospitals across the nation are already struggling to manage the sick 60,000 new daily COVID infections plaguing the U.S. As ICUs fill up, some models suggest our nation could see upwards of 4,000 deaths a day by October. So 4,000 deaths a day by October is a bold claim to make and not something to be taken lightly. Numbers like those would, according to this New York Times graph, rival those seen when the virus was at its worst this past winter. That same graph tells us that the most reported daily deaths happened on January 12, 2021, with 4,406 reported deaths. The day the clip aired, the US's seven day average for daily US deaths was 362 every day. So a 10 times increase would have to happen over just two months for the NBC claim of 4,000 a day to happen. So what's the deal with this prediction? Let's dig into stats and models in this special episode of Is This Legit? Whenever a news outlet quotes a study or statistics, it's always a good idea to read upstream and try and find the original data being cited. In this case, all they say is some models. So I'm gonna have to do a keyword search to try and find the source. Typing in 4,000 daily COVID deaths by October USA, I found this NPR article discussing some data that seemed pretty similar to the one being quoted, mainly because the same 4,000 deaths per day by October is being repeated here as well. It was generated by the COVID-19 Scenario Modeling Hub, which according to the article is, quote, a consortium of researchers working in consultation with the CDC. Seems pretty legit. I'm gonna save the NPR article for later and check out the data they linked to. Before we continue, it's important to note that we still don't know for sure what NBC was referencing, but this does seem like the most similar data source. As it turns out, this is the seventh round of the data being published, meaning that since the beginning of the pandemic, the researchers have updated the forecast seven times. The page for round seven shows four different graphs and an explanation at the bottom tells me that the results have two factors, US vaccination rates and how transmissible a variant is. After spending a little bit of time looking through the models, I saw that in the worst case scenario, we could see up to 30,000 deaths per week in October, which would equal 4,000 plus incident deaths per day. This prediction is based on a future where vaccination rates stay low and there is a high increase in variant transmissibility, which could only happen if something significant changes, like a variant becoming a lot more transmissible than what we're dealing with now. For the 4,000 deaths per day prediction to be accurate, the model projects that case numbers would need to increase to 240,000 a day. As of August 8th, the New York Times reports that the current seven day average of daily cases was 110,360. So how exactly did researchers come up with these numbers in the first place? We can head back to the article we put aside earlier to find out. According to NPR, the researchers combined 10 mathematical models from various academic teams to create an ensemble projection. A note at the bottom says that they calculate both the average probability and median of the 10 different models. They put a link to a more detailed page explaining their math and where you can find the models they use. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. As I said, the researchers have displayed four potential scenarios. Scenario a is the best case with high vaccination numbers and low transmissibility increases. And scenario D is the worst case with low vaccination numbers where we stay stagnant at a 70% rate through October and a high transmissibility of the Delta variant being 60% more infectious compared to the Alpha variant, the original COVID strain. Since the range of scenarios is so large, it's important to note that each model doesn't have an equal chance of happening. The NPR article credits the researchers as saying that the most likely scenario falls somewhere in the gray area in the middle, around 850 deaths a day, five times fewer than the one being quoted by NBC. That's exactly why when Dr. Fauci was asked about the 4,000 number on CNN, he said, quote, I'm not so sure we're gonna see that worst case scenario. Keep in mind, this forecast is trying to predict something that might happen more than two months from now. And as anyone who's ever checked the weather forecast, Hoping for a sunny beach day knows. Checking months in advance isn't incredibly accurate. In COVID terms, this is why the CDC only forecasts cases four weeks in advance. The researchers do explain why they created the forecast, saying that their forecasts are necessary to quote, compare outbreak trajectories under different scenarios, as opposed to offering a specific unconditional estimate of what will happen. They continue that long-term projections can guide longer term decision making. So to summarize, the forecast was designed to help politicians make decisions, but they make a trade off in accuracy admitting that even the best models of emerging infections struggle to give accurate forecasts 
at time scales greater than three to four weeks due to unpredictable drivers. This is why the range between worst case and best case is so large. As we know, the worst case scenario predicts 4,000 plus deaths a day, but the best falls down to as few as 130. That's why picking the biggest number and running with it instead of displaying the range of options just as NBC did isn't the best idea to ensure accuracy. So we're gonna rate this claim as needs context. Although there was a model produced showing 4,000 plus deaths a day, that was only one of four different models. It also wasn't even the most likely one to happen. It's important to remember that this is an imperfect prediction and no one truly knows exactly what will happen with the Delta variant or other variants in the coming months. So what's the takeaway here? Is it to completely ignore these models and shun forecasting as a whole? Not at all. It's a reminder that with both modeling and hard data, context is critical. There's always gonna be a bigger picture and using a bird's eye view is important to understand what the data is meant for. Bye everyone. Don't compromise, be media wise.